Chris Marola, Red Momentum Strategies. Do you like the Hollies, Chris? Uh, yeah, they're okay. I mean, they're not my favorite group, but they're okay. Oh, well, I know you. You like uh, you like that hard rock. Uh, again, depends on depends on the group. I'm very picky with my music. Well, how are things today at Red Momentum? Uh, things are doing well. Uh, how, how are things there in Atlanta? They're doing. It's raining, and we're we're supposedly getting a uh, winter storm uh, watch. It's gone into effect. Well, you're going to get a taste of what we get uh, uh, every winter. Yeah, but this is Georgia. We shouldn't have to experience that kind of nastiness. Plus, we only have three salt trucks in the whole state. Well, well, we really yeah. only need three salt trucks in the whole state. I think they might have more than three, maybe four, 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 four or five. We don't. <laughs> well, I mean, they don't need them. Well, the irony is, you know, I grew up in suburban Philly. What's up, Jack? And uh, we had a salt truck up and down the street. Schools didn't close unless there were, you know, two, three feet of snow. And even then, it was a a, a close call. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I can remember walking to school. As a, as a child, with snow up to my knees, and that's that's no exaggeration. Well, what you got on your mind? Let's uh, let's talk about something a little bit more cheerful than a winter storm watch. Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it's, it's pretty interesting what's really going down here. We know that um, uh, President Obama has released his uh, so-called uh, proposals for gun control, and uh, the the two that really caused me uh, to just laugh uh, is the so-called banning of military-style assault weapons, which is a huge exaggeration of the facts, but just that, that term alone, assault weapons, and I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. And the second is how, the, what's a, how, the, how he, excuse me, wants to limit uh, ammunition magazines to 10 rounds. Now, neither one of these things will truly solve gun violence or gun crime in America because, first of all, um, the idea that military-style weapons are being used in the civilian world, being sold at the commercial market, is false. Everyone who knows anything about uh, handguns and rifles knows that you can only buy semi-automatic rifles, which means they fire one round at a time. You can't buy automatic weapons, which fire multiple rounds at a time, much like a machine gun. So what people like Obama and the gun control activists do is they use this jargon, military-style assault weapons, to convince you that people are going to gun shows and just buying machine guns and then, and then using them to you know, kill all these people. But you and I both know, Alan, you can't buy automatic weapons. It's, it's already illegal. That's true, and and as I look down Obama's executive order list, it it really, first of all, the notion that he's just doing legislation through executive order. I mean, we all have a problem with that. Almost all of us have a problem with that. But it's really, it's just talk. He's not really accomplishing anything there. Yeah, well, yeah. There's a lot of symbolism, but no substance, which is actually good because we don't want the government encroaching upon uh, the people's Second Amendment rights and liberties. But the idea that they can demonize people who purchase simple rifles, whether they are an AK-15 or a hunting rifle, it's the same thing, essentially, because you're still firing one round per second. You're not able to just, you know, purchase, again, a machine gun that fires multiple rounds per second uh, you can't use the same military-style weapons. They're, they're claiming you can just because they look like the weapons that they use in the military, but they're automatically modified yep. when they go to the commercial market. So most people don't know that. Most people believe that, you know, well, we, we have to ban those assault rifles. There really is no such thing as an assault rifle in the commercial market. They're already illegal. Well said, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. So don't you yeah. think this is just political theater and the left stream, left wing side of the news media is just going along with it like he's really trying to do something? Well, yeah, I, I think he's throwing some mud on the wall, wants to see what he can do and what he can get away with. I and mean, listing the ammunition magazine for 10 rounds, you know how easy it is to simply slide a magazine out of a rifle and then slide a new one in? 
I mean, if somebody wants to fire multiple rounds into a crowd, if some you know crazy sociopath wants to do that, it's not hard to simply remove a magazine and then put another one in in a matter of a split second. So limiting rounds to 10 rounds per second, I mean, what, what is that all about? This is just a camel sticking his head under the tent, you know, trying to get that foot in the door. If we can convince people that, uh, you know, basically these rifles are bad, then we can go a little farther the next time and a little farther the next time until finally they can grab, well, pretty much all weapons and all rifles. Obviously, that seems to be the goal of those uh, on the political left. So right now, you know, incrementally, it looks like Obama's just, testing the water and seeing what he can what he can get away with. I think you're on to something here, Chris. I mean, we give the enemy a foothold, he'll take it all. And right. these are small, subtle steps. I was having a conversation via Facebook yesterday, and somebody uh, made a comment under the link basically saying, you know, not everything in, the, in this new uh, executive order is going to be bad. You know, he's not banning guns. He's just banning certain things. So, you know, look at the bright side. And it's just, it's ridiculous to me the veil that people have over their eyes concerning our liberties that our forefathers fought so darn hard Mm -hmm. to not only create, but maintain, you know, and and our grandfathers and our fathers who have fought overseas and, you know, made sacrifices so that we can sit here and make bad decisions. It's just absurd to me, man. And I'm really, honestly, I'm worried. I'm worried about those, mostly about those who are nonchalant about it and really have this undying faith in our United States government to protect us when in actuality what they're doing is stripping us, stripping us of protection. So, Right. It's, it's, it's the desire to conform at all costs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's really what scares me. That's what political correctness is all about. It's all about breaking the will of the people and causing them to conform. In psychology, it's called group think when you follow the crowd at all expense and that's the biggest concern is what you just said people aren't alarmed even at the small incremental power grabs Uh, so why would they be alarmed when there are larger power grabs coming after that I I thought this was interesting uh, with what Obama had to say yesterday he said that uh, his recommendations uh, for this this gun control violence and, and this gun control um, excuse me, gun control policy towards violence. Uh, he said the recommendations um, do not prohibit uh, doctors from using the Affordable Health Care Act to ask their patients about guns in their homes. Yeah, we were discussing that earlier. So, so now that's the most insidious statement of all, because now it appears that Obama wants to use doctors to spy on their patients. Yeah. And does that information then end up in their medical records? And if it does end up in their medical records, can the can the Obama administration then track who has the handguns and the rifles through their doctors and through people's medical records? I mean, this now that gets a little scary. That sounds a little uh, George Orwellian right there. By any means necessary, you know, it started with the Patriot Act, and here we are. We're moving towards. These uh, these personal relationships that should be privileged information between doctors and patients. And now all of a sudden, Uncle Sam has his hand more in our pocket. Right. So, man, I'm with you. I think it's a slippery slope and we are we are falling like an avalanche. It's it's uh it's alarming, to say the very yeah. least. A, a snowball, you know, can roll into a giant uh, uh, boulder uh, in no time at all. If it rolls down a hill long enough. So. It may seem like a small reach or power grab, but in time, it begins to pick up steam and and gather even more snow as it rolls down that hill. Well, that's kind of what happens with some of this gun control legislation. Once you let the doctors start asking you personal and private questions, I guess privacy means nothing to to some of the people who are, are gun control advocates. Once you allow that to happen, then they just keep going farther and farther. But... The, the people that don't seem to get this, yeah. uh, the gun control activists, Switzerland, for instance, issues a, a gun to every adult in their country and then trains them on how to use it. And people would think, oh, my gosh, that, that's so scary. They probably have so much gun crime and so much gun violence. Well, as a result of Switzerland issuing their, 
their uh, citizens' guns and then training them how to use them. Uh, Switzerland has the lowest gun-related crime rate of any civilized country in the world. And isn't it ironic that those places in the United States with the highest gun crime rates are those with the strictest gun control laws? Yeah, like like the city of Chicago. Yeah, places. Obama's old stopping grounds. Go figure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I saw something from the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, and they they said that sixty seven percent of all gun violence in America, sixty seven percent, occurs in the fifty largest cities, mm. and seventy three percent of all firearm ho- homicides occur in those big cities. Uh, se- excuse me, seventy three percent of those uh, cities uh, where the crime uh, occurs uh, occurs among teenagers between eight, the ages of uh, 10 and 19. So we're, we're basically talking about gangbangers. Yeah. Here, gang- exactly. Yeah. So basically that, that's what it is. So the overwhelming majority of the gun violence is committed by people who are breaking the law anyway and using guns illegally in the first place. Yeah. So how, oh, I'm know? sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'm done. Oh, I was just going to say, since when do criminals obey the law anyway? This isn't going to stop. Like you said earlier, this isn't going to stop. Uh, the bad people from doing what they were going to do originally. This is going to stop the nonviolent family oriented people from protecting their families. This is, this is the grand design. I'm starting to actually understand what certain people around me are saying. Now, this is part of a bigger plan to disarm us and eventually to have us in bondage one way or another. And these, these may be proverbial chains, but I'm starting to get the feeling, you know, all these notions of FEMA camps and uh, indefinite detaining are not too far off in the distance. Um, I may sound like a lunatic, yeah. but, you know. But, uh, it's, it's hard to say how far off those things are in the distance, but I do know this. George Mason, one of the founding fathers, did say the easiest way to enslave a people is to disarm them. Yep. And so because... You know, how did Jefferson put it? When, a, when the people, uh, uh, you know, when the people are afraid of their government, it's tyranny. When the government's afraid of its people, there's liberty. And there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris Morola, Red Momentum Strategies. Chris, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks so much. Right on. When Joey and I return, we'll get into our U.S. history segment for the day. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. The Dow, ever since it got up in that upper 60 range, that's pretty much where we sit. The S&P is up 7, and the Russell is at an all-time high once again. We'll see you shortly. 